we just got this teak cookie and we're gonna do something different with this one. This piece has got a great shape. It's about two inches thick, it's kiln dried, and it has this hole. First, we're gonna take care of this cavity. Epoxy would look fine, but we're gonna do something a little different. I found this alloy on roto metals. It's a casting metal and it's real unusual. It actually melts at 203 degrees. The alloy comes in one pound ingots. They're not very large as you can see, but they are kind of pricey. These were $16 each and I ordered 12 for this project. We're going to use a rabbit bit and we're going to cut a recess in the hole from the back side. Then we're going to slide a plug in there, probably plywood, and we're going to try to make it so that from the front side, from the top, there'll be three quarters inches of metal. And I think we have enough to do that. We're going to fill this hole with a piece of plywood. To make a pattern, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna slide a piece of paper under there. We're gonna trace it with our pencil. Pull it out, cut it with some scissors. We're gonna tape it with some packing tape to a piece of plywood and head to the bandsaw. up we can flip it over to the face side and estimate how many little ingots we're going to use for this pour. this metal cools and contracts, I'm going to put a few screws for it to grab hold to. Just take a moment here and admire our ingot melting system. We have a $15 hot plate, we've got a $12 pot, and we're ready for business. I did speed up the footage here, but it really took only five minutes for them to go from ingots to complete liquid. And I think we're ready to pour. As I pour it, I'm really taken back by how completely liquid this is. It's actually as thin as water. I thought maybe it would have some body to it, but all in all, I think it's going pretty well. Until about right here. Then this happened. A molten stream of disappointment. Houston, we have a problem kind of a danger, danger, safety third, let's cancel the t-shirt situation. There was a certain amount of panic that happened. Um, thank goodness, between Jordan and I, we were able to pick it up and wedge in a 
T-square and level it out and we had just enough metal to pour in and top it off. The next morning I was very curious as to whether or not the metal had burnt the table but somehow the metal on the table had formed itself into a strange platypus dolphin hybrid. Mysterious, but yet I may sell it on my Etsy store. Somehow in the cooling process of the metal, it became crystalline. So we have to fix this. And so I got my handheld torch and I just heated up the top and it kind of smoothed out with just a very little bit of effort. So I let it cool again. next morning it's cooled and there seems to be no crystalline structure at all so I start sanding and I work it pretty hard with 80 right over the metal and then I change to 120 and it comes down smooth with the wood pretty quickly pattern left by the sander on the metal is kind of interesting. As I go up in grit, I'm going to have to try to get a very consistent look across there. But as I move forward, I draw my best squiggly lines and then I try to sand them off the best I can. I work from 120 to 180 and on up to 220. And with the sanding virtually done, we really need some legs. So I glue up some blanks. We cut the corners off. We throw it on the lathe and we start turning it around. Keeping with our metal theme, we're going to use a quarter inch round plate to attach the legs to the bottom of the piece. There's going to be three legs. We're going to position them in a triangle and then we're going to recess them into the bottom with a template and a pattern bit. Using the rings and the quarter inch aluminum plate to set my router depth, I put double sided tape on the rings so that I can place them over the aluminum plates that I have in the corner. template stuck down I remove the aluminum plate and I'm gonna ease the router down and I'm just gonna work around in a circle until I get it completely routed out and I will do it two more times we'll do a little vacuuming and we're ready for all three plates to slide in place We're going to turn these aluminum blanks into brackets. First we're going to put some blue tape on them so we can mark on them. 
we're going to take a center finder and we're going to find the center. Then we're going to take the table leg, position it in center, and trace around the circumference as a no-go zone. Then we're going to take some rulers and we're going to draw a grid pattern. And this grid pattern is going to give us some locations for four mounting screws. Just like this. Over at the drill press, we secure it with some double-sided tape to hold it and we start drilling our holes. And we're gonna drill one in the center, then a lag will go through the hole of the leg, and the four on the perimeter will hold the whole thing in place. I really don't know if this bit is designed for metal, but it's the only one I had, and today it's gonna to be cutting aluminum. And it did a pretty good job. We lag the legs to the plates. We'll use a Forstner bit to remove a little bit of wood for the head of the bolt. And with the legs positioned, splayed in the proper direction, we'll mark them with a quarter inch drill bit for the inserts. holes drilled, we'll drive in the inserts. And finally, we get to screw the legs in place. And they, they do look fantastic. And as we get ready to finish it, our excitement is very high. Um, we're using Rubio Monocoat, and we got so worked up that after we got through finishing it, we realized we didn't film a thing. So I'm gonna give you a short montage of what we did on a little baby teak cookie. You're gonna need a container, something to stir, a squeegee, a white scotch Brite, creepy, creepy syringes, rubber gloves, also kind of creepy, we're gonna mix up our Rubio Monaco. We're gonna put the oil. We're gonna add the accelerator. It's a three to one ratio. We're gonna mix it up thoroughly. We're gonna spread it with our squeegee. Then we're going to scrub it in with our white scotch Brite. Let it sit maybe 15 minutes. Buff it off. And now we're done. Mm -hmm.